Hello students, welcome to the lecture on listening skills. And after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Discuss about definition of listening skills. Define effective listening. Understand presentation skills. Explain listening to announcements. Describe listening to radio and television. Let's start with the introduction of listening skills. Listening is a process of receiving, interpreting, and reacting to the messages received from the communication sender. Effective listening is an art of communication, which is often taken for granted and ignored. Like any other art, listening requires to be cultivated consciously and carefully. Unfortunately, our education systems, beginning from kindergarten up to college level, does not pay attention to the teaching of effective listening. Poor listening can be considered as a mighty barrier to communication, as listening is fundamental to all communication. It often results in losing messages due to improper functioning of communication. Listening requires conscious efforts of interpreting the sounds, grasping the meanings of the words, and reacting to the message. Interpreting the sound signals is a cognitive act which depends on the listener's knowledge of the code signals and on its attitude towards the communication sender. Let us now discuss the definition of listening skills. Listening is the act of hearing attentively. 45% of our time is spent on listening. We listen more than speak. If this listening skill is used in a proper way, we can master the tools of communicative skills. Listening is difficult as human mind tends to distract easily. A person who controls his mind and listens attentively acquires various other skills and is benefited. Listening skill can be defined as listening is the act of hearing attentively. It is also a process similar to reading which should possess knowledge of phonology, syntax, semantics, and text understanding. Thomlison defines listening as active listening which is very important for effective communication. Listening can be also defined as more than just hearing and to understand and interpret the meaning of a conversation. It's amazing. I just have to finish this one thing. Do you know this behavior? Pretty much I experience it on a daily basis. We've lost the art of listening because we are so distracted by these devices that are everywhere. It's our phones that are beeping and buzzing and ringing, but that's not it. It's everybody else's phones too. Because of all this distraction, we've really lost the gift of connecting with the people that we're speaking with. And there is no better gift than you can give somebody than your undivided attention. Are you someone who, in a course of a conversation, you're just waiting for those gaps so that you can throw in your two cents about your story and your life? If that's the case, then I invite you to take a moment and pause and, and really take in what they're saying and ask a question. Oh, you'll be amazed by what you discover. Now, it may feel awkward at first, especially if you're someone that always likes to say, oh, that's so funny, that totally reminds me of when I fill in the blank. But when you ask that question, you're eliciting curiosity, and through curiosity comes amazing conversation. People are incredible. They're full of interesting stories. And you'll be amazed at when you start to ask somebody about themselves and their business and their day, how they open up to you. Because it's a very generous act. And it's an even more generous act to really take in their response. Finally, by putting the distractions away and really asking questions and then listening to their answer, you build this trust. And it's in that trust that you can just be. That's the final, most important point about listening. It's the gift of being. Breathing in the moment and taking in the other person and taking in the environment and really saying to yourself, no, I'm not going to be in my head. I am not going to be attached to my device. I am really going to just allow myself to relax in this moment and enjoy what is in front of me. There is magic there, but it's just up to us to discover it. Listen up. Identification. Listening skills are essential in the workplace, the family, and the community at large. Body language. Good listening skills include using body language that empowers the speaker. Listening is not the same as hearing. Hearing requires to the sounds that you hear, whereas listening requires more than that. It requires focus. We spend a lot of time listening. 
adults spend an average of 70% of their time engaged in some sort of communication. Of this, an average of 45% is spent listening compared to 30% speaking, 16% reading, and 9% writing. The 10 Principles of Listening A good listener will listen not only to what is being said, but also to what is left unsaid or only partially said. Effective listening involves observing body language and noticing inconsistencies between verbal and nonverbal messages. 1. Stop talking. If we were supposed to talk more than we listen, we would have two tongues and one ear. Do not talk, listen. 2. Prepare yourself to listen. Relax. Focus on the speaker. Put other things out of mind. 3. Put the speaker at ease. Help the speaker to feel free to speak. 4. Remove distractions. Focus on what is being said. Do not doodle, shuffle papers, look out the window, and pick your fingernails or similar. 5. Empathies. Try to understand the other person's point of view. 6. Be patient. A pause, even a long pause, does not necessarily mean that the speaker has finished. 7. Avoid personal prejudice. Try to be impartial. Do not become irritated and do not let the person's habits or mannerisms distract you from what they are really saying. 8. Listen to the tone. Volume and tone both add to what someone is saying. 9. Listen for ideas, not just words. You need to get the whole picture, not just isolated bits and pieces. 10. Wait and watch for nonverbal communication. Gestures, facial expressions, and eye movements can all be important. Purpose of listening skills. Simply to be a good friend, our purposes for listening can influence various aspects of receiving a message. Identifying and understanding this purpose can focus our attention on the skills needed to become an effective listener. This model of listening consists of five basic listening purposes. 1. Discriminative. 2. Comprehensive. 3. Critical. 4. Therapeutic. 5. Appreciative. Discriminative listening. Discriminative listening involves distinguishing one sound from another, one word from another, or one message from another. Comprehensive listening. Comprehensive listening, also known as precise listening, involves listening to understand the message. Therapeutic listening. Therapeutic listening occurs when we lend an ear to a troubled friend or relative, or listen for the purpose of strengthening a social connection. Critical listening. Critical listening is for the purpose of making a judgment regarding a message, or being persuaded to some degree by a message. Appreciative listening. Appreciative listening is for the purpose of gaining enjoyment through receiving creative works of others. Types of listening. All communication is a two-way process that involves responding to input. In spoken communication, the first response that occurs is the process of listening. Passive listening. Passive listening is equivalent to not listening to what is being said. Informative listening. Also called data only or comprehension listening, informative listening refers to the process of listening exclusively to the content a person expresses, without figuring in the other nonverbal communication. Evaluative listening. As the name implies, this type of listening seeks to judge and evaluate data to form an opinion. Facilitative listening. Facilitative listening allows you to adopt a helpful attitude to the other person. Now we will study about effective listening. In today's high-tech, high-speed, high-stress world, communication is more important than ever. Yet we seem to devote less and less time to really listening to one another. Genuine listening has become a rare gift, the gift of time. It helps build relationships, solve problems, ensure understanding, resolve conflicts, and improve accuracy. Here are 10 tips to help you develop effective listening skills. Step 1. Face the speaker and maintain eye contact. Talking to someone while they scan the room, study a computer screen, or gaze out the window is like trying to hit a moving target. Step 2. Be attentive, but relaxed. Now that you have made eye contact, relax. You do not have to stare fixedly at the other person. Step 3. Keep an open mind. Listening without judging the other person or mentally criticizing the things one tells you. Step 4. Listen to the words and try to picture what the speaker is saying. Allow your mind to create a mental model of the information being communicated. Step 5. Do not interrupt and do not impose your solutions. Children used to be taught that it is rude to interrupt. Step 6. Wait for the speaker to pause to ask clarifying questions. 
When you do not understand something, of course you should ask the speaker to explain it to you. Step 7. Ask questions only to ensure understanding. At lunch, a colleague is excitedly telling you about her trip to Vermont and all the wonderful things she did and saw. Step 8. Try to feel what the speaker is feeling. If you feel sad when the person with whom you are talking expresses sadness, joyful when she expresses joy, fearful when she describes her fears, and convey those feelings through your facial expressions and words, then your effectiveness as a listener is assured. Step 9. Give the speaker regular feedback. Show that you understand where the speaker is coming from by reflecting the speaker's feelings. Step 10. Pay attention to what is not said, to nonverbal cues. If you exclude email, the majority of direct communication is probably nonverbal. Tips for effective listening. Listening makes our loved ones feel worthy, appreciated, interesting, and respected. Ordinary conversations emerge on a deeper level, as do our relationships. When we listen, we foster the skill in others by acting as a model for positive and effective communication. Let's know about the presentation skills. Presenting information clearly and effectively is a key skill to get your message or opinion across. And today, presentation skills are required in almost every field. Whether you are a student, administrator, or executive, if you wish to start up your own business, apply for a grant, or stand for an elected position, you may very well be asked to make a presentation. for effective presentations. Talk naturally to your audience, although it may be appropriate to read short passages. Avoid reading from a script for the majority of your presentation. Stand rather than sit and move around a little, but avoid pacing backwards and forwards like a trapped animal. Vary the tone, pitch, and volume of your voice to add emphasis and maintain the audience's interest. Aim to speak loudly and clearly while facing your audience. Avoid talking in a monotone voice or turning your back to the audience. Make eye contact with your audience. Personal presentation. Personal presentation is all about marketing you, the brand that is you. What others see you do and hear you say will influence their opinion of you. So personal presentation is about painting yourself in as positive a light as possible always. Effective communication. Personal presentation is about you and how you present yourself in everyday situations.
Areas of personal presentation. Self-esteem and confidence. Self-esteem is not a static thing. It varies based on numerous factors, different situations, and the presence of different people. Personal stress levels and change. Effective speaking. Your voice says a lot about you, and learning how to use it more effectively has many benefits. Personal appearance. The way you dress and take care of your general appearance are important factors in personal presentation. What messages does the way you dress send to others? Your personal appearance also includes the body language, gestures, and other non-verbal messages that you use. Time management. If you do not manage your time wisely, you are less likely to be able to get everything done effectively. Guidelines for designing the presentation. The design and the layout of the presentation has an impact on how the audience receives it. Therefore, you need to focus more on the clarity of your presentation and the content. Following are some points you should consider when designing your presentation. Derive the top three goals that you want to accomplish through your presentation. The entire presentation should focus on achieving these three goals. If you are not clear about what you want to achieve, your audience can easily miss the point of your presentation. Understand what your audience is. Have a list of points that you want to communicate to your audience. Prioritize them accordingly. Decide on the tone you want to use in the presentation. Choosing the presentation materials. When your presentation is supported by additional material, you can make more impact on the audience. Reports, articles, and flyers are just a few examples. If your presentation is informative and a lot of data is presented, handing out a soft or hard copy of your presentation is a good idea. Some guidelines on presentation materials are Make sure that you check the computer, projector, and network connectivity in advance to the presentation. Use a simple but consistent layout. When it comes to time allocation, spend three to five minutes for each slide. Presentation delivery. Delivering the presentation is the most important step of the process. This is where you make the primary contact with your audience. In order to deliver effective presentations, consider some points. Be prepared for your presentation. Use true examples to explain your points. Use humor in the presentation. Pay attention to details. Listen to announcements on railway, bus stations, airport and stadium. Some railway announcements. Attention passengers, we have a very full train today, so please do not block the doors. We will be moving shortly. Attention passengers, we cannot move the train unless you keep out of the way of the closing doors. Stand clear. Will the passenger holding the train doors open in the second to last car please step on or off the train so that we can continue? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a passenger holding the doors of the train open, and we cannot move until the woman he is speaking to either gathers her suitcases and steps off the train with him, or convinces him that it is really over and he should just let her go. We apologize for the delay. Airline announcements. Listen to some typical public announcements made in an airport or airplane. Pre-boarding announcement. Good afternoon, passengers. This is the pre-boarding announcement for flight 89B to Rome. Final boarding announcement. This is the final boarding call for passengers Aaron and Fred Collins booked on flight 372A to Kansas City. Pre-flight announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board flight 4B7 with service from Hong Kong to San Francisco. Captain's announcement. Good afternoon, passengers. This is your captain speaking. First, I would like to welcome everyone on right wing flight 86A. We are currently cruising at an altitude of 33,000 feet, at airspeed of 400 miles per hour. Safety briefing. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the crew, I ask that you please direct your attention to the monitors as we review the emergency procedures. The rise of new technology was predicted to spell the end of traditional media. But despite the nation's fascination with the latest gadgets, it seems the simple pleasure of listening to the radio is what makes Britons happiest. The media and the Mood of the Nation study found that people who regularly watch television, use the computer, or listen to the radio were happier and had more energy than those that did not. But it found that radio had the most mood-enhancing effect, with listeners saying that it lifted their happiness levels 100%, and energy levels by 300% compared to those not using any media at all. The report said radio is chosen as a lifestyle support system, 
to help people feel better as they go about their daily lives, rather than the peaks and throws that people have claimed to experience with TV and the internet. Radio provides a consistent environment themed and shaped to suit the listener's needs at any given time of day, and one that is generally upbeat in tone. Viewers said TVs boosted their happiness by 62%, and energy by 180%, while those using the internet said their happiness was increased by more than two-thirds, and energy levels leapt by 220% when compared against people consuming no media. The research, which was based on interviews with more than 1,000 people commissioned by the Radio Advertising Bureau in a bid to establish whether media influence the way people feel. Did you know? Active listening has been developed as a concept in music and technology by François Pachet, researcher at Sony Computer Science Laboratory, Paris. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Active listening process begins when the listener pays attention to some audible sound signals and permits himself to interpret those sounds cognitively. Good listening skill is mandatory to get into a profession in communications, management, planning, sales, and so on. Discriminative listening involves distinguishing one sound from another, one word from another, or one message from another. Listening makes our loved ones feel worthy, appreciated, interesting, and respected. Ordinary conversations emerge on a deeper level as do our relationships. Personal presentation is about learning about yourself, being interdirected and accepting of who you are, your positives and your negatives, and being comfortable with yourself.